All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today we're going to pick up one of my all-time favorite cheap cars, the Jaguar X-Type, or if you're from the States, Jaguar. Jaguar. This particular car arrived in part exchange. My colleague paid £750 for it, which I thought sounded quite cheap, but it gets better. It's a 2009, which means it's a, it's a facelift model. You know, the ones with the indicators in the wing mirrors and the mesh grille. It's one of those. It's a 2.2 litre turbo diesel, which is quite a reliable old engine, even though diesel isn't the most popular fuel types today. And it's automatic. So it's 750 pounds. I can't really go wrong with this. Famous last words. I haven't actually seen this car yet or driven it. So as they say, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. I remember a few years ago, in fact, many, many years ago, I really wanted one of these X-Types, one of these facelift diesel automatics. I just thought they looked really good. Anyway, I'm guessing this one might need quite a few hundred pounds spending on it to bring it up to scratch. I'm just hoping that it isn't too rusty. I've had dozens and dozens of these cars over the years and they always have rusty sills. The sills always need replacing, it's quite a big job. In fact, I've got one at my mechanic right now, which is currently up in the air, having two new sills. So I know it's a common issue and it will zap all the profit out of this deal if they're rotten. They might not be, of course, but I'm just setting the bar really low like I always do. That way I won't be too disappointed. Right, well, we're not too far away now, so let's go and see what £750 has bought me. Well, we're here. I think, I think I've swum the channel there, guys. That looks like, well, it looks like a five grand car. I'm not saying it's worth five grand, but it certainly looks like every penny of 750 Is that a sport model? I don't know, it's got the bigger wheels. It's a bit of an old man's colour, a bit of a wishy-washy blue. Neither, neither one thing nor the other. Oh my God, it's got a National Trust sticker. It's had a little bit of paint to the front bumper and it needs some more. A couple of little scuffs there. The wheels want refurbishing and the near side rear tyre looks a little bit soft and flat. We've got the original plates from Stratstone. Could do with a fresh set of plates, really, couldn't it, that? There's a little bit of damage to that front wing, driver's side. That looks all right, though, you know. Someone's fitted one of those retrofit digital DAB things because we've got a DAB aerial. This is often the trouble with older Jags. They're bought by generally older people who have plenty of time on their hands and an eBay account, and they smother them in chrome and aftermarket bits of tat. Right, as always then, let's check this one out using Car Vertical. It'll tell us a bit more about the car. It'll tell us whether it's been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or has outstanding finance on it. It's really easy to do. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg or the VIN. In this case, we know the reg is Alpha Foxtrot, so it's come from Anglia. 09, Uniform, Oscar, Yankee. Check vehicle. This is currently checking hundreds of millions of cars across dozens of countries' databases. It isn't expensive and it can stop you from buying a complete lemon. If you want to do one of these checks for yourself, and I urge you to do so before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorcycle, use my promo code HIGHPEAK and you'll save yourself 10% off each and every check that you do. Alternatively, click the link below in the video description. Right, and this one's done. So it is a 2009 diesel X-Type. It's never been stolen. There's no odometer issues. There's no outstanding finance and there's no recorded damage. That's good going then. Right, I was thinking for £750 that this might have been to the moon and back, but it hasn't. It's only gone about halfway. At the last MOT, which was done in March this year, it had done 106,800 miles. So it's not too high really, is it? I think there's some profit in this. Oh, this is interesting, right. The average market price for such a vehicle is £3,818. It is a 2009 2.2 .2 litre diesel, the same as they used in the Evoque, and what else? The Freelander? It's a belt-driven engine, so I'll have to make sure the belt's been done. Otherwise, that's going to cost me £400. It was registered in March. Perfect. Oh, it's had a reg plate on it. Boo. Boo. Very apt with it being Halloween. Boo 461. The ownership changed in 2016. Okay, that's all very good. It failed an inspection in 21 on a front coil spring, fractured or broken. No, it's not a sport at all. It's an SE. The road tax costs £320 a year, it's quite high isn't it? On the last MOT done at 106, the near, well both front tyres actually, near side and offside front tyre tyres were worn close to the legal limit. It failed before that because of a headlamp beam issue. Right, it's not too bad is it? What's weird is in the last, that's strange, I think someone's passed away here you know, 
there's no other explanation for this. Between February 22 and March 23, it had only done 28 miles. That's 28 single miles, singular miles. How odd is that? That's strange. Right, just gonna have a look around it. Let's have a look then. Oh, deployables, right. There she is. I spotted some rust straight away. The other bit of good news is we've got both sets of keys. Do they work? Yeah, one does. The other one does. Results. So, just as I said in the car, we've got some spots of rust here. Always seem to go on the wheel arches. It's a little bit scabby. I mean, the outer sill looks okay, but you never really know until you get it on a ramp. They look a bit scabby, don't they? Like they've been sat. The calipers and the discs look a little bit ropey as well. Ah, we've got decent tyres though. We've got a Pirelli P0. I was fully expecting this to be a, a Happy Gallop or a Happy Clapper or one of those cheap Chinese brands. That looks okay though. We've got a Respect the Water sticker. Royal National Institute for the Prevention of Lifeboats there. We've got a scuffed wheel and another ropey ro uh, brake disc, but another Pirelli. Another Pirelli. It does look quite worn on that outer edge though, and they look like old tyres. They're going to need replacing. From 2017, in case you're wondering. Slight dent there that someone's touched in. That'll buff out. That'll buff out and touch in. That's not too bad. I can live with that. Got a nice black leather interior. It is crying out for a set of reg plates. Got front parking sensors. Got some more scuff damage there. I think that could be touched in though carefully without spending a fortune on it. I mean really to make it pristine you'd paint the whole front bumper really but how far do you go on this car? Straight away we're into wheel refurbs, two tyres, possibly three tyres. That one looks a bit flat. This one is a Marshall. Is it a Marshall Mathers tyre? Mm. If it is, it'll be all bitter and angry all the time. This is made in Korea. Oh, it's a Kumo. It's not a Brad Band. Brad Band. It's not a bad brand. No rust here, but a couple of scuff marks. National Trust there from 2018. A little bit of condensation there in the indicator. And back here, we've got another Pirelli. Mm, you could go to town with this and put four tyres on because this is from 2017 as well and it looks a little bit old. If I put my foot through that, it is very soft. Moving around the back then, I really do need to get my strimmer out. Moving around the back we've got some damage to the paintwork and a hole in the bumper, Delilah. Hmm. Well, I'm not complaining for £750 because I think this is a bargain. But straight away I've spotted £800 worth of work. Wheels are going to cost me 180 for a set. Tyres are going to cost me 300 quid maybe. Bumper, 150 Hmm. What do I do with this? Do I keep it cheap, sell it as it is, or do I, do I go to town with it? Got electric seats. Do we? Ah, not forwards or backwards. Why do they do that? Cheap out and stuff like that. That's an old Ford switch. We've got power vault mirrors. That's work. Look at that. Four electric windows, which is a good option actually because on most X types they had manual winders in the back. Got plenty of air freshness here. Cotton candy. We got in the back there. Old oh, cup holders. They're good cars, these, aren't they? I like them anyway. What have we got in the boot then? It's all very grubby. All that moss should wash off there, shouldn't it? What have we got under here? Have we got any water leaks? Uh, no. We've got, I think my Marshall Mathers MM tyre was the spare because this is a matching Prelly. That's what I think. 
Detective Inspector Goodwin. Uh, what else can I show you? Look at the old auto box, look. This is all right, you know. There we go, look at the aftermarket tat. This is either an eBay special or an Aldi center aisle special. We'll never know, will we? Oh, heated seats. And an auto dimming rear view mirror. The seat is very, very upright here. It's been a local car, because I've just spotted the name on the logbook. Right, we've done 109. Little Jaguar emblem there. I can't show you, for GDRP reasons, the customer's name, obviously, or address. But it is a local car. And there is hmm, a bit of history here, actually. He paid £7,000 for it in 2016. Classic FM, obviously. Well, there's a wad, a wad of paperwork. Ah, it's been to Elite Cars, Elite Jaguar, for a gearbox fault that's been re rectified. It's had a new turbo. I hate cars. Why are they so unreliable? Glow plug wiring harness, stuff that you don't get with petrols. Oh, it isn't a timing bell, it's a timing chain. Right, 103. Turn off this music. At 103,000 miles, check engine for non start and no compression. We found that the timing chain rockers and lifter timing chain found to be correct. Ah, right, okay. So it's chain driven. They fitted a new EGR and throttle body and a battery. That cost £938, that's expensive. It's had a DPF clean. All the other joys of driving a diesel car. This is why you're far better with a petrol. It had a new turbocharger at Elite for a thousand pounds in 21. Someone spent a lot of money on this. It had a service at 101. Coil spring, we know about that, don't we, on the uh, previous MOT. Another service here at 99,000 miles. It's had a new alternator, discs and pads. Had a lot of work done at Elite. That's a good sign. Full service there at Elite. Right, sorry, I'm boring you to tears here, but the the long and short of it is that we've got quite good service history. Let's see if there's a service book. Got a lock and wheel nut there. Have we got a service book as well? Warranty benefits. Navigation system. Right, there's no service book as such. No, there's no service book, but we do have a, a wad of paperwork. Got a little USB point there. Sat nav. I always like this system. I know it looks a little bit dated now, but it's very easy to use, very easy to operate. Should we fire this up then and see if she drives all right? Wait for my little glow plug. The unmistakable sound of a diesel engine, sound of a taxi cab. So it has done 109,297 miles. We've not got a single warning light on. We've got half a tank of fuel. This seems to be all right, really. With all that history, with the new turbo and all that sort of stuff. It's got to be good news, isn't it? Let me pull it forward a tad so we can Right, does need a very good clean this, but not a bad car is it really? Should we have a look under the bonnet? There we go then, the old 2.2 litre turbo diesel. I don't have complete faith in those struts to be honest. I'm going to get a whack on the head aren't I? It looks very, very honest under here doesn't it? It's a good clean. No obvious leaks anywhere. A little bit of corrosion in various places. But then it's a 14, nearly 15 year old car, isn't it? Right, shall we drive this? 
see how it performs. Take her for a spin. What I'm checking for really, we've got an amber warning there, service required. What I'm checking for here really is that the gearbox changes as it should. We've got no knocks or clunks or bangs or whistles. A little bit of a knock here where the suspension feels a little bit loose. It's quite a good spec this, isn't it? Just notice we've got auto lights. Hmm. Put my heated seat on. Yes, we've definitely got something knocking on the front there. Maybe D bushes, track rod end, drop link. I hope it's not the bottom arms because on Jaguars they are quite expensive. Can we go, can we go, can we go? There we go. I mean, on paper at least, this is quite a good car. It might be worth spending a thousand pounds or so on. And then perhaps I'll get it back on the other end. We've got a annoying vibration coming from the boot, I think. It might be that spare wheel that isn't secure. I noticed it wasn't in properly. Yeah, we've got lots of little knocks up front. That's irritating, isn't it? But it's driving all right. Changing gears, fine. Quite pleasant, really. Hmm, this could cost me a right few quid. Does it smoke under acceleration? Hmm, seems to be all right. Just have to bear in mind, one of my rear tires is a little bit flat, so I won't be going too fast today. Right then, I think what I'm going to have to do with this is run it to my mechanics, make sure the sills aren't rotten, and find out what it's going to cost me to get through a clean MOT. I think I'll ask them for a general check over, and then if it checks out all right, then service, MOT, with no advisor items, sort the suspension out, then worry about the bodywork and the wheels. Oh, and the tyres. This is such a borderline case. I'm quite glad we've only paid 750 for it, because any more than that, I don't think there'd be any profit in at all. But at 750, it might still be doable. If, for example, I spent a thousand pounds on this, so it would be 1750. Worst case, it's gonna be worth 2995, hasn't it? So there's still over a grand profit. Hmm. Right, leave this with me. Catch up with you very shortly. And we're back in the cheap Jaguar X type, and it's now all done and ready for sale. I'm quite pleased with this one because I've saved yet another X type. And luckily, I didn't massively overspend on this one. Let me tell you what happened then. What happened was, after we spoke last time, I ran this down to my mechanics, and I was half expecting them to completely condemn it. It was one of those borderline cases. And what's funny, this happens a lot in this job. Sometimes I'll take a car down there that I think is very nice, loads of history, and it drives nice, and I think, yeah, this will pass its MOT, and it'll only need £40 spending on it for its test. And then what happens is I get a bill for £800. And equally, sometimes I can take a car down there that I've not got total confidence in. Sometimes I'll buy something and I think, mm, it's all right, but I'm going to get a big fat bill at my mechanics. And then what sometimes happens is two or three days later, my mechanic calls me to say, right, so-and-so is ready. It was only £220. Result. That's what happened with this X-Type, and I'm over the moon. I got a call from a mechanic a couple of days after dropping this, and they said, right, it's all ready. I said, all right, okay, I was half expecting you to write it off. And she said, no, it needed a couple of tyres, brake discs and pads, a service, a couple of suspension arms, but no, nothing catastrophic. So I had a bit of a result, really. Then I called Luke, the wheel guy, who came out and refurbished the wheels. If you remember, they were quite badly scuffed and scraped and, and curbed in general. And what he's done is sanded them all down, repainted them, relacquered them, and they now look as good as new. It's really lifted the car. After that, in fact, I'm not sitting here waiting in this traffic. You've got to know all the shortcuts, you see. After that, I picked it up from there and took it down to Jimmy the Magician, who painted it. He painted various bits and pieces, but I told him not to go mad with it because it's a cheap jag at the end of the day, and I didn't want a humongous bill. So there are still a couple of areas which aren't completely perfect, but I think in general, he's done a really good job and it looks nice. This car really benefited from a good buff. Go on then, and let you through because it's Christmas. How do you feel about one finger waves? Not a fan of that. What's wrong with that? Or that? Anyway, what happened next? Oh, it needed its valet. So I dropped it off at the valeters, Tameside Valetin, who cleaned the car from top to bottom, and I picked it up from them this morning. I got it back to work and photographed it, and I've advertised it at £3,495, which I think, well, I think it's a lot of car for the money. But Autotrader disagree. They've told the whole world that it's £600 overpriced. Cheers, Autotrader. 
Cheers. I mean, what do you think? I think for a facelift X-Type automatic with 109,000 miles on the clock and loads of history in a decent spec, I think £3,495 is a bit of a bargain. Now, if you remember, I paid £750 for this car. And I think I've spent around about, around about, around about £1,200, I think. I haven't worked it out to the penny, so that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna park with my usual spot and I'll sort you through my costs. Here we'll do then. Huh? Somebody's emptied the bin. Very good. One thing I can tell you about this car is the heater works exceptionally well. Melting here. For some reason, the previous owner's got it set to uh, Fahrenheit, which I don't understand. Tell me my exterior temperature is 50, which I think is 10. I think that's 10. 80. I think that's hot. Okay then, right. Knock the old engine off. Right, the car cost me £750. The bill at my mechanics was 743 which I said wasn't too bad. It's actually the same price as the car. I didn't think was too bad. I just expected them to completely rip this car apart. And in fairness, what it had was oil filter, oil, so just a, a minor service really, front brake discs, front brake pads, two tyres, MOT test V, labour, two suspension arms. So, what else have we got? The wheel refurbs cost me £190. The valet cost me £70. The bill at Jimmy's was £400. Now, what he did was repair and repaint front bumper, remove repair and repaint rear bumper, remove, ah, remove rust, offside rear wheel arch, and repair half quarter, okay. Clay, wash, buff, polish, wax, full vehicle and touch in, and a general clean. £400. Great value. So my grand total is, hang on a sec, 750 plus 743 plus 190 plus 400 plus 70 for the valet. It's windy up here today. My grand total is, for this old 09 Jaguar X-Type automatic, is £2,153. So if we can get three and a half grand for it, then there's a profit of around 1350 Which isn't bad, is it? I'd take that, really. And I've saved another car, so that's good. Right, well, I think that's about it. I hope you all had a good Christmas. Thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Bye.